How did Jimmy Wanjigi transform from being an ally of nearly every president in Kenya to becoming one of the government's most formidable enemies? William Ruto came to assault my family. He can pretend all he wants in church, as my wife says, that he's a Christian. But what his policemen did, because he cannot feign ignorance of the fact that they were in my home, I know he knows. What makes him so dangerous that every a government feels compelled to deploy its elite forces to apprehend the Kenyan billionaire? <laughs> For the past week, the Safina party founder has been a thorn in the side of President Ruto's government. Not only has he exposed Ruto's incompetence, but he has also hinted at ambitions to remove Kenya's fifth president from office. That. Ruto must go is a clarion call even in my heart. He must go. William Samoy Ruto cannot solve problems that he has helped create. His bold statements have left Kenyans questioning how Jimmy Wanjigi can criticize President Ruto so fearlessly, especially when Ruto is regarded as one of the most intimidating figures in Kenya. Isn't he afraid about the repercussions of crossing President Ruto? Let's dive into the life of Jimmy Wanjigi, a man whose mere presence sends shivers down the spines of Kenyan presidents from Mwai Kibaki to Uhuru Kenyatta and now the fifth president, William Ruto. Before 2013, Jimmy Wanjigi's name was not widely recognized by the general public in Kenya, but it certainly resonated among the elites. Behind the scenes of multiple government deals, Wanjigi was the mastermind, pulling the strings across the security sector, military, parastatos, and parliament. His influence in these areas propelled him from being an ordinary hustler to an international business mogul, owning properties in the UK, Dubai, and Zurich, as well as a lavish home on a five-acre estate in Mudaiga, where Kenya's elite reside. This is a home I would like to tell you uh, we struggle to build, but this is a home I want to also tell you that this current regime of Uhuru Kenyatta these are home they know. Numerous reports suggest that Wanjigi amassed his wealth through exclusive access to single sourced multi billion government contracts. How did he secure these lucrative deals? According to sources, he provided loans to key figures controlling major sectors of the country, who in return awarded him these tenders. For example, he extended a business loan of 500 US dollars, almost 50 million Kenyan shillings, to Wang Guang Wen, the local project manager for China Petroleum Pipeline Bureau, a company that has secured multi billion tenders from Kenya Pipeline. Mr. Wanjigi is known for conceiving projects or participating in their inception convincing government officials to support them and then connecting with Chinese companies capable of securing infrastructures, funding from Chinese policy banks, particularly the China Export Import Bank, Exim, and China Development Bank. In these deals, he acts as the local agent, earning between 9 and 15% of the contract value. Mr. Onjigi was orchestrating nearly all government contracts from behind the scenes, not only in infrastructure, but also in the security sector, where rampant corruption is concealed under layers of secrecy. As his wealth grew, he attracted the attention of prominent politicians in Kenya, and as a shrewd businessman, Wanjigi ensured that his interactions with these politicians always served his best interest. During the Kanu era, Jimmy Wanjigi became deeply involved in the security sector, leveraging his close relationship with the late George Saitoti, the former vice president and internal security minister. Saitoti through Wanjigi gained insights into security needs within Kenya, and as a businessman, Wanjigi seized the opportunity to provide solutions. He supplied critical equipment, including tamper-proof passports, 
forensic laboratories, helicopters, and satellite services, often through single-sourced contracts. It was through these dealings that Jimmy Wanjigi's name began to circulate within government circles, although much of his work remained behind the scenes. His first major brush with political prominence came during the Anglo leasing scandal, where fixtures and shell companies were awarded multi billion shilling security tenders in the final years of the Kanu regime. The scandal derived its name from the company that secured the first of these contracts. Ukweli ni kwamba wewe umeishi hapa. During Mwai Kibaki's presidency, Wanjiki continued to assert his influence in government procurement, still operating from the shadows. He exploited his connections with members of the Kibaki family and key presidential staff, smoothly integrating himself into the new regime and becoming one of its most influential deal makers. According to U.S. Embassy cabals, Wanjigi's first significant windfall during Kibaki's era was a 5.6 million U.S. dollars, almost 560 million Kenyan shillings deal, which he shared with a powerful cabinet minister at that time. At the core of this scheme were 18 grossly overpriced state security contracts, totaling to 770 million U.S. dollars involving various foreign and domestic entities, with the latter acting as intermediaries. The National newspaper reports that Jimmy Wanjigi's strategy across various regimes involved manipulating policy formation, crafting budgets, and shaping laws to serve his own interests. He reportedly had a strong grip on nearly every institution within Kibaki's government, leveraging this control to secure numerous tenders across different procurement departments. As Kibaki's regime came to an end, Wanjigi maintained significant influence within the government and continued to dominate in the tendering process. He was reportedly prepared to invest billions in the next administration to ensure his continued success in securing tenders. In fact, their government was formed in this home. In this home. <laughs> this, these are the facts. These are the facts. Reports suggest that Wanjigi played a pivotal role in the alliance between William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta prior to 2013 general elections, brokering their coalition that led to the formation of the Jubilee Party, which eventually succeeded Kibaki's government. During the 2012 Jubilee campaigns, Wanjigi is said to have been instrumental as a fundraiser. By uniting Ruto and Kenyatta in funding their campaigns, the billionaire aimed to secure his involvement in the Standard Gauge Railway, SGR project, a 320 billion shillings initiative he had proposed during the Grand Coalition government. Wanjigi had reportedly struck a lucrative deal with the Chinese companies lined up for the project and was set to earn close to 32 billion shillings from the 10% agency fee typically charged through his company, Tile Limited. People want to do business, but it is very expensive. Like I said before, by bus is 1,200. If you wanted to take a flight, the minimum was 12,000 shillings on a one-way trip. Here you are now at 700 shillings. You can take your family on vacation. It appears that Jimmy Wanjigi's plans were disrupted by Uhuru's regime when the government handed a lucrative project to another agent, leaving Wanjigi sidelined despite reportedly contributing over 600 million shillings to their campaigns. This move seems to be the beginning of his enmity between the Kenyatta's and the Ruto family. During Uhuru's tenure, Wanjigi's influence extended into neighboring countries like Tanzania, where his close relationship with the former president John Magufuli was well known. Pundits suggest that he played a role in setting up a parallel vote tallying system during the last elections in Tanzania. I call him, I refer to him as a prominent Kenyan businessman. Jina lake Jimmy Wanjigi. Fast forward to 2017 general elections. 
after losing trust in the Kenyatta's regime, Wanjigi resurfaced, ready to take another leap of faith by funding Raila Odinga's NASA coalition. His intentions were clear. If Raila came to power, Wanjigi expected to secure lucrative government tenders. He heavily funded NASA's campaigns and even allowed the former prime minister to use his helicopter registered as 5YJWJ. Mr. Paul Mwangi, a lawyer deeply involved in NASA's campaign, stated that his role was limited to legal matters. However, two outspoken MPs from the opposition alliance refused to comment on Wanjigi's role, switching off their phones when asked. Despite his generosity towards Raila Odinga and the NASA coalition, Wanjigi's financial backing appeared to be in vain after Raila failed to win the presidency. As the saying goes, more money, more problems, and Wanjigi has certainly faced his share of controversies as a Kenyan billionaire. During Kibaki's era, he was implicated in the Anglo leasing scandal, where he was accused of threatening to kill whistleblower John Gidongo before Gidongo fled to the UK. A Gidongo's dossier revealed that Wanjigi was deeply involved in these projects acting as an agent for various companies associated with the Kamani family and businessman Anura Leslie Pereira. This is where he made his billions. Before that, Jimmy was an average person by millionaire standards. A close friend of Wanjigi confessed. But this is a home I want to also tell you. That this current regime of Huru Kenyatta, this is a home they know. It's a home they have visited. To the home they've eaten with, they've eaten with my family, here in this home. That after the last general election in 2013, it is this home that Baba here agreed to come to, to shake hands with Uhuru Kenyatta after the Supreme Court had upheld his declaration. Wanjiki used his wealth to climb into the billionaires club and now aware that some of his close associates were involved in defrauding the Kenyan taxpayer through non-delivery of goods, services and massive overpricing. These shady dealings led the British and the US governments barring him from entering their countries, which explains his absence from international trips. Having clashed with Kibaki's government, Uhuru's regime and now Ruto's administration, many are left wondering, what is Jimmy Wanjigi's endgame? He should resign like yesterday. And his government should resign. Rigathi Gashagwa should resign. The speaker was already cancelled by Gen Z when they went to the floor. While some claim his continued attacks on Ruto's team from no longer receiving the tenders he once did, Wanjigi believes he is ready to challenge Ruto at the ballot and become the next president of Kenya. But the big question remains, are Kenyans even ready for Wanjigi's presidency?